Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back with a very long overdue subscriber requested video. So I had somebody ask me a long, I mean, it's probably been six or eight months ago now, uh, to talk about like my top three favorite notes. And so I wanted to make sure that when I did this video, I um, got, you know, a good bunch of perfumes together for each note. So it just took me a while to, to kind of get it together. So I have got 30. <laughs> perfumes here to talk about because I picked out 10 for each fragrance. These are, or for each note, these being my favorite notes, um, like in the world, I have more perfumes with these notes in them than probably any other in my collection besides Rose. I love Rose, but I wouldn't say it's one of my top three favorite notes. Um, I went through a Rose phase. I really adore Rose, but yeah, it's not one of my top three, but I do have like 25 plus rose perfumes in my collection. But anyways, with that being said, I'm gonna jump right in. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on each fragrance because I do have, like I said, 30 different fragrances here to talk about. So I'm just kinda, kind of gonna run through them and talk a little bit about each one. But yeah, I'm gonna jump right in. So my number one favorite note, and this is gonna be so boring, and I know some of you are gonna be super disappointed, but my number one favorite note in perfumery is vanilla. If I see a perfume that is a vanilla-based perfume, I know that I'm pretty much gonna love it. For me, vanilla just smells divine in all of its iterations. And vanilla can be done in so many different ways. You can have warm vanillas, spiced vanillas, boozy vanillas. You can have just plain, simple, sweet vanillas, gourmand vanillas. It's just such a versatile note and I love it. There's something so cozy and comforting and heartwarming about vanilla for me. It's my absolute favorite note. There's a reason that, you know, when you're selling your house, a lot of times real estate agents will tell you that if you're gonna burn a candle, make sure it's a vanilla one. You can make like a little concoction that you leave simmering on the stove that has vanilla in it. For the most part, it's just like a universally, universally loved smell. Not everybody loves vanilla. I've had plenty of people leave comments on my videos saying that they absolutely hate vanilla, that they just do not enjoy vanilla in perfumes. So there are definitely people out there that don't like it, but I absolutely love it. I've got a ton of vanillas in my collection, but I pulled, I feel like a good mixture of vanillas um, that kind of show you how versatile vanilla can be. So the first one I pulled is Vanilla Extreme from Comptoir's, Comptoir Sud Pacifique. I love this. This is a super sweet, really, really milky gourmand vanilla. I absolutely love it. This one's great for layering. It's great for, you can just wear it on your on its own. It's a good one. It lasts a pretty long time too for being a vanilla fragrance. This one actually hangs around on me. I can get a good four to six hours out of this one. So I love it. So that is Vin 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 Extreme from Come Toward Sud Pacifique. I have got, this is one of my favorites too. I've got so many vanilla. It was really hard for me to narrow this down to just 10 because I've got so many vanillas that I love so much. Um, I've got this one here. This is Delicious Vanilla from Gail Heyman. The bottle, the bottle itself is actually really pretty, but the cap is just really ugly. I love this one. This one smells like old school. I mean, old school, original formulation, warm vanilla sugar from Bath & Body Works. I absolutely love this one. This is a beast on me. It lasts forever. Um, it's amazing. It's a warm vanilla. I think the original formulation from Bath and Body Works has like sandalwood in it and it's just a warm, beautiful vanilla. So that is G Gail Heyman Delicious Vanilla. Then we've got this one here. This is Tohoda. This is the Coco Pink clone of Tohoda and I love this one too. It is a pretty simple, sweet, vanilla, but there's a richness to it. There's a little bit of a complexity to it. It's really, really beautiful. It's a rich, warm, deep gourmand vanilla. I absolutely love it. Again, great for layering, great to just wear on its own. It's so good. I love wearing this one with the uh, Nemat Vanilla Musk oil. The combination is amazing. They smell very, very similar. So that is Coco Pink at Tahota. Then we've got this beauty. This is a really, really gorgeous, very complex, kind of perfumey vanilla. This is Van Cleef & Arpels Orchidae Vanille. This is gorgeous. This is flowers and chocolate and nuts. 
I would say this one's gourmand leaning, but it is quite perfumey and it's got a really beautiful chocolate note in it. I think this one's got some tonka in it too. I love it. I adore it. Beautiful, complex, perfumey vanilla. Then we've got, this is another kind of simple vanilla. This is Montal Vanille Absolu. This is the first smelly male that I ever got from anybody and I will never forget like who this came from. I'll never forget this because it's the first, it, it's like literally the first thing that was ever sent to me. I love this. This is not dissimilar to Tohota. It's a little bit, it's a little bit more simple than Tohota. It's just a sweet, gourmand, yummy, edible, kind of milky vanilla. It's really beautiful. This one is an absolute beast. This I can get 10, 12 hours out of easily. It lasts forever. I love wearing this one on its own because it does last so long. Um, I don't have to worry about reapplying anything. I don't, this one I don't have to use to layer with because it just, it's so beautiful as a standalone fragrance. So that is Vanille Absolu from Montau. And then we, one of my most favorite vanillas of all time, this is Pure Vanilla from La Vanilla. Um, this is a beautiful, very perfumey, very complex vanilla. I love this one because it is a clean perfume. This is one that you can feel good about wearing this one. It does not have a lot of the other yucky ingredients and stuff that, um, and things that other perfumes have. And I love this. It's incredible. It's an absolute beast on me. It lasts forever. And it's just a beautiful, complex, perfumey vanilla. Next, we have Lalique Le Parfum. I love this. This, this is a really beautiful vanilla that has, a, I think it's like a West Indian bay leaf note in it. So it's got a little bit of a, like, herbaceousness to it, but not in a fresh way, if that makes any sense. It just adds like another facet to it. And it's also the facet that somebody may not like about this one. This is a really unique vanilla. Um, I've never really smelled anything else like this one. It's definitely, this is more of a perfumey vanilla as well. It's definitely not gourmand. Um, the vanilla in it is a gourmand type of vanilla, but because of that bay leaf and some of the other notes in this one, this one is really warm, smooth, Again, a little bit more complex than some of your other vanillas, and it's definitely different. It's very different. This is one that I always recommend people try to find a sample of first because this is one that you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. A lot of people really love it, and a lot of people have, have had success blind buying this one, but I don't ever recommend buying this one blind because it is a very different take on vanilla. But the base of this one, is vanilla for sure. Um, this is a beast too, lasts forever, and I absolutely love this one. So that is Lalique La Parfum. I'm trying to go fast because I've got so many perfumes to get through. Okay, next we have, and then I will probably, with these perfumes, because I've got 30 perfumes in this video, I will put the name on the screen. I'm probably not gonna go through with the notes because really what we're talking about or what I want to highlight is the one note that <laughs> that I love, that's my favorite note, which is the vanilla. So I'm not really um, gonna put all the other notes on the screen. But anyways, next we've got Lune Feline from Atelier des Ors. I love this fragrance. This is another one that is just, it's an amazing, very strong vanilla, but it has, it's got a bunch of spices in it, but the number one spice that you can smell the most is cardamom. It's like a fiery cardamom vanilla fragrance super, super warm. Like this is one of those fragrances that's gonna warm you up on a cold day because it's such a warm fragrance. It's, the cardamom in it is just so, it's just so prominent. It's just so like, bam, it's there. It's such a good one. So anyways, that is Atelier de Or Lune Feline. Okay, next we have, this one is from Essential Parfums and this is called Divine Vanille. This is another really beautiful, complex vanilla. It's got, this one is very unique as well. I've never really smelled anything else like this. It's vanilla, but it's got a ton of other stuff going on in it. It's got a little bit of woodiness to it. There is a really bright, there's a really bright aspect to it. I'm sure it's citrus in the top. It's really beautiful though. Again, very 
perfumey, not, this one is not edible. This is more of like a perfumey vanilla. It reminds me of a sweeter version of Eau Duel from, from Diptyque. So anyways, that is Essential Perfumes Divine Vini. And then the last vanilla one that I wanted to pull because it's just such a good vanilla. This is Vini from Outremer. This is such an affordable perfume too. You can find this on Small Flower um, for about $22 and it lasts forever because it is filled all the way up into the neck. And you can see I've had this bottle for years and I barely got a dent in it because and I overspray like crazy. I overspray like a crazy person. I've still got so much because um, it comes filled all the way up into the neck. But this is a beautiful like cotton candy vanilla. It's like vanilla, like a very light cotton candy vanilla. I love it. Simple, sugary, gourmand, yummy. Amazing to layer with, great on its own. It's just, it's such an affordable little gem. And if you love vanilla, it's, uh, for me, this is like a must have. So anyways, that is Vini from Outremer. Okay, and then my next most favorite note on the planet is Tonka. I love Tonka. I love any perfume. If I see it's like a Tonka-based perfume, I'm gonna be all over it. Um, I adore Tonka and I can all, I'm one of those people, like I can always pick the Tonka out in a fragrance too because it is the most beautiful, warm, kind of roasty, almost vanillic note, and I adore it. Okay, so Tonka is another one that can be done. It can be used in totally different ways. It can be used in kind of heavier perfumes to add like a richness and a warmth. It can be used in light perfumes. I've got some florals that have Tonka in the base that are really light perfumes that the Tonka is used to kind of give it this really beautiful, um, like well-roundedness and to really balance it and to ground it. Um, so Tonka is really versatile too, but my favorite use of Tonka is when it's a really dark, rich, aged Tonka. That's my favorite. So one of my favorite perfumes with Tonka in it is Christian Dior Addict. This is the original formulation. The original formulation has Tonka in it. I cannot be convinced that the new formulation does not have Tonka in it as well. Every time I talk about that perfume and, and I go to put the notes on the screen, um, it's just bourbon vanilla in the base and I swear it smells like it's got Tonka in it. Um, so I don't know if like the note breakdown is incomplete on Fragrantica and it really does have Tonka or if it really doesn't and I'm just imagining it. This formulation, however, this is the 2002 formulation. This one definitely has Tonka in it and I absolutely love it. The Tonka to me is what makes this perfume so rich. The Tonka is what really brings it all together and gives it the most beautiful, like roasty, rich fragrance. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I, and Tonka is kind of a hard note to explain. Tonka is, it's like a pod that grows on a tree. And I think depending on when it's harvested, there's like, a certain percentage of coumarin in it, if I'm remembering correctly. And I believe the percentage of coumarin that it has in it kind of um, di dic dictates like what the fra what kind of a fragrance it's going to have. So I think if you harvest it a little bit earlier, it'll have kind of like sweet green or like slightly green kind of grassy, like a grassiness. And if you, the later that you harvest it, it starts to kind of smell like tobacco, um, like a nutty tobacco. So, and I love it either way. I love it how, no matter how it comes, I've got, like I've said before, I've got perfumes that it's like a much lighter Tonka. And then I've got most of my Tonka perfumes are the really rich, deep, kind of tobacco-y, almondy. Even, I even kind of get a little bit of like a milky chocolatey thing from Tonka and that's my favorite kind of Tonka but yeah so I always have the hardest time explaining Tonka because it's not tobacco and it's not a nut it's like a pod that grows on a tree so but anyways yeah Dior Addict is like one of my number one Tonka fragrances I think it's just stunning okay next we have a lush fragrance this is Vanillary um, Vanillary has Tonka in it. In fact, a lot of Lush fragrances have Tonka in them. That's one of the reasons I love Vanillary so much. And this is like, 
This has two of my favorite notes in it. It's a vanilla-based perfume that has Tonka in it, which I've got a couple of these kinds of perfumes that it's like a vanilla perfume with Tonka in the base, and I absolutely love them. It's one of the things that makes vanilla so special and sets it apart from so many other vanillas on the market. Like, there's not another vanilla out there that smells like this fragrance. This one I would say is somewhere between the sweet grassy Tonka and the kind of roasty, rich, tobacco-y Tonka. It's amazing. Such a beautiful perfume and yeah, it incorporates two of my favorite notes. So that is Lush vanilla -y. Next we have, um, this is a Be Layered fragrance. This is Mia's Blend from Be Layered and this is a clone of Jo Malone Myrrh and Tonka. I absolutely ado adore Myrrh. It's one of my favorite kind of resinous notes. So this one to me is just beautiful. And the Tonka in this one is so rich and almost milky that it really rounds out the myrrh. Oh gosh, it's amazing. I haven't smelled the original myrrh and Tonka from Jo Malone, so I'm not totally sure if this is like a really good clone, but I can tell you that this one is so good. And this one, as it ages, has just deepened up beautifully and it, it has been aging beautifully. I love it. So that is Mia's Blend from Be Layered. Next we have another Lush perfume and this is, I actually only have the body spray because they don't make the perfume anymore. I've been keeping my eye out for a bottle of the perfume forever because I would love the perfume and I wish that they would just bring it back. This is Lush Twilight, and this one is Lavender and Tonka. I absolutely love this one. The body sprays last almost as long as the perfumes, though. The body sprays perform really, really well. I also have the Sleepy Lotion, which is the same scent as Twilight, um, and I'll layer the two, and oh my goodness, I'll smell like it for 24 hours. It lasts forever. This is Lavender, but with the most beautiful Again, roasty, slightly nutty, kind of sweet tobacco-ish Tonka. And it is amazing. It is so beautiful. This is another one that has just aged magically. It smells so good. I absolutely love it. I was really disappointed because um, Soap and Glory, they also have a lavender, I think it's a lavender and Tonka scent. And I ordered the shower scrub and this body butter, and it's a no-go for me. It and it, it smells really, really masculine. Like it smells like a very masculine scent. It doesn't smell like lavender and tonka at all. I was really hoping that it would smell something like this, but it doesn't. You really just cannot beat Twilight or Sleepy. Okay, next we have a Gallagher fragrance. This is Gallagher Wicked Good. This might be my most favorite. Tonka fragrance. Well, yeah, besides Dior Addict, I this is, gosh, this is such a good fragrance. Um, it's really, really simple in its composition. It's just Madagascar vanilla and chocolate, but it's my favorite chocolate fragrance on the market that I've smelled so far. I love it because it's a heavy chocolate. It's, it's the Tonka bean in it that, that makes it so heavy. The chocolate and the vanilla on their own would never be as rich smelling if it weren't for the Tonka. The Tonka is very heavy in this. It's very, very, very rich, very nutty, and again, kind of tobacco-y, just rich. And the chocolate, of course, brings out the chocolatiness that you can get with Tonka. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite fragrances ever. Um, this is one of those that I would, I need to buy a backup bottle of this because I'm afraid that, I don't know, I'm afraid that something's gonna happen and I'm like not gonna be able to get this anymore. So I need, and this is probably halfway gone because I use it like crazy. I love it. It's just one of my favorites and I adore it. It's such a good representation of Tonka to me. I adore it. So that is um, Gallagher Wicked Good. I'm super passionate about Tonka. I love Tonka so much. Um, a fragrance that I don't own, I do have a decant of it from Royalty Scents, uh, Feb Delicious from Dior. I do like that one too. That's a really beautiful Tonka fragrance, but it's, that one leans just a touch masculine on me, which is the only reason I didn't include it in this because it's, I like it, but it's not one of my favorite Tonkas in the world. Okay, next we have, this is like a fresh Tonka, and this is the only fresh Tonka that I pulled because 
um, I don't feel like it's a great representation of Tonka because these are not the fragrances that I go for when I'm looking for a Tonka fragrance. Uh, this is an Hermes fragrance though, and this is called Vetiver Tonka. This one is, you get the grassiness of the vetiver because vetiver is super green and grassy. And then you do get kind of a sweet grassiness with the Tonka as well. It's also really, really grounding. It gives the fragrance some body. I love this one. This one leans just a touch masculine as well, but I still love this. It's really green, really classy smelling, and it's like a light, fresh version of Tonka. So that is Hermes Vetiver Tonka. Next we have, this is La Belle Le Parfum, and this is a beautiful representation of Tonka as well. This one is very similar to the original La Belle, but this one has that beautiful, roasty, rich, almost syrupy Tonka in the base. The Tonka gives it a little bit of a nuttiness. It's, I don't know, the, every, whenever I think of Tonka, I just think of roasty. Roasty is the word that comes to mind because that's, what it smells like to me. It smells roasty. I love it. So yeah, the Tonka added to this version of LaBelle is perfection. It's amazing. It takes LaBelle to like another level um, and I adore it. So that is LaBelle La Parfum. This is a really gorgeous fragrance as well. This is Manifesto from YSL and this is another perfume that to me, this is a Tonka fragrance. It's a lighter Tonka, so it's not, this is not nearly as heavy as the Tonka in um, in Wicked Good. This is a very similar fragrance to Addict, but the Tonka isn't as deep and rich and roasty smelling in this. It's a little bit of a lighter Tonka, and it is fantastic. I love this one so much. This is one that, um, where Addict, I definitely, I'll wear Addict any time of year. Sometimes I'll wear it in the middle of the summer. I don't even care, but it is quite heavy for the heat. Manifesto is one that can really be worn any time of year because it's a much lighter, more wearable um, Tonka fragrance. And I love this perfume. I've got a backup, but I've got this bottle, I've got a backup and I've got a dupe that I wear all of the time. Um, and I love the dupe as much as I love the original because it's such a good clone. But yeah, I absolutely love Manifesto, one of my favorite fragrances. So anyways, that is why I sell Manifesto. Ooh, next we have a Duwa fragrance. This is Duwa Tonkalicious, and this is a clone of Guerlain Tonka Imperial. This is a fragrance that is kind of like Feb Delicious in that it is not a sweet fragrance. This one does lean, I would say just a touch masculine but I love Tonkalicious because it's got a little bit of a sweetness to it. There's a little bit of a creaminess to it as well. So if you can imagine like a milky Tonka, that's what Tonkalicious reminds me of. A very slightly sweet, milky, roasty Tonka. And it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. I would love to get my hands on a bottle of Tonka Imperial from Guerlain. I also am dying to get a bottle of the new Shalimar, uh, the Meliz, Mel, I don't know how to say it, Melisme, Melisme um, Tonka one. I want it because I'm obsessed with Tonka. So anyways, that is Tonkalicious from Dubois. And then last but not least, we have another YSL. This is YSL Libre Intense. I think the reason the Intense is my favorite formulation of Libre is because of the Tonka in it. I love every formulation of Libre. I think every formulation is fantastic, but I absolutely adore the intense version because of the addition of the Tonka. It's not such a heavy Tonka that it like pulls down the fragrance or makes it super heavy, but it brings a beautiful richness to it, a beautiful roastiness to the base of a sweet, syrupy, honeyed fragrance. I absolutely adore it. Intense has always been my favorite formulation. And I think that that's why, because of the Tonka in it. So anyways, that is why I sell Libre Intense. And then my third favorite note is Amber. So Amber actually isn't technically just one note. Amber is like an amalgamation, or is that a word? Amalgamation? I think it is. Um, 
or like a conglomeration of different notes. It can be combinations of different notes. Typically it's vanilla and resins um, that make up amber, but amber really is very versatile and there are a lot of different kinds of ambers on the market. I love a really traditional amber, a really beautiful um, vanilla heavy resinous amber. So I've got quite a few of those, but I've also got some different types of ambers, some white ambers and just some different types of ambers. I love amber. It's one of my favorites notes. Anytime I see amber listed as a note or an amber based fragrance, I feel like I have to have it. Um, these are just 10, of course, these are just 10 of each category or of each note. I've got a lot more than just what I'm showing, but I just pulled some of my favorites for each note. So yeah, if you know that I have something that I haven't shown, um, there's really no reason I didn't show it. I just pulled 10 kind of randomly and I tried to pull um, a variety of perfumes that show how the note can be used differently. Okay, so let's start with a really beautiful kind of traditional amber. This is Histoire de Parfums. This is Ombre 114 and I adore this perfume. I love this one because it's a really beautiful, very traditional, vanilla heavy, resinous amber, but this one to me is very unisex. I think even though it does have quite a bit of sweetness to it, I think that this would smell just amazing on a man as well. I am gonna do a video on unisex fragrances soon. That was another request from somebody. It's been like a month ago now. Um, I am getting to that one. But anyways, yeah, very unisex, really beautiful, sweet. It is traditional smelling, but without having that kind of mustiness that amber can sometimes have. Sometimes amber will remind you of like an old dusty used bookshop or something or an antique store. Um, it can definitely have this kind of musty, kind of old, but not mature, if that makes sense, smell to it, which uh, I adore. It like soothes my soul. But anyways, yeah, this is a really, really beautiful, vanilla heavy, sweet, perfectly unisex amber. Okay, next, staying in that kind of same vein, we've got Musk Amber from Nemat. This is, I pulled this one because this is a really affordable oil that you can get. I love this one too. This one, like the last one we just talked about, this is another one that I think is amazingly unisex. This one is a little bit less sweet. It's a little bit more resinous, a little bit lighter smelling, and it doesn't have like a ton of vanilla in it the way that the Ombre 114 does. It's really, really beautiful. This is like a clean, very slightly sweet, really resinous amber. It's amazing. I love amber oils because they typically last forever. I've got an amber paste oil from Kumba Made that is, wow, it's nuclear, so good. So that is Musk Amber from Nemat. Okay, next we've got Laura Mercier Ombre Vigny. And this is another one I love because it's incorporating two of my favorite notes, um, amber and vanilla. And oh my gosh, I love this. This is more of like a sugared amber. It's a really, really sugary, very vanilla heavy, it's kind of slightly, very lightly musky amber. I adore it. This thing is absolutely nuclear. I picked this up at TJ Maxx. It's been a few years ago now. And when I very first got it, um, it didn't last very long on me. But now that it's a few years old, holy cow. I don't know. It's like condensed or something. Not condensed. What's the word that I'm looking for? It's, it's like satin macerated and it's just gotten really, really strong and it's nuclear on me now. I can spray this on, I, I always overspray, but if I overspray with this one, a oh, holy cow, it's gonna be on me for 24 hours. It is so, so long lasting. I absolutely adore it. It's a sugary amber. Um, it's the same kind of amber that I get in my um, pink perfume, Victoria's Secret pink, um, I forget what the name, why can't I think of the name? Um, but anyways, it's like a sugary amber and vanilla fragrance as well. It's not super unlike this one. They're kind of similar, 
but yeah, I love it. This isn't like a musty resinous amber. This is like a sugary vanillic amber and I adore it. So that is Laura Mercier Eau Gourmand Ombre Vanille. Okay, next, this is what I mean by ambers can be so, so different. So this next one, this is Lake and Sky 1111. This is also similar to Riddle Oil's Original Oil. The, oh my goodness, these are like white musk and white amber perfumes. I also have the most beautiful white amber oil from um, Sweet Essentials. Same, it's the same family. These are the most beautiful, clean, but warm amber fragrances. Sweet, cozy, perfect. It's a totally different kind of amber. It's not like a resinous, musty amber. This is a really beautiful, warm, cozy, clean, white amber. I am obsessed. I'm obsessed with like white amber perfumes or white amber oils. Um, I really need to get on the hunt and see what else I can find for white amber. I don't have like a white amber spray perfume, so I feel like that's really what I need to go looking for is a white amber spray perfume that I can layer over my oils. I love them. Even though this thing is nuclear, you do not have to layer anything over this. If you do go to purchase this perfume, I have tried this spray perfume and then I have the oil. You can see I've got a huge dent in the oil. I use it all of the time. I highly recommend going for the oil version instead of the spray perfume. Um, the oil version is just leaps and bounds better than the spray perfume. So anyways, that is Lake and Sky 1111. Okay, next we've got Madonna Truth or Dare Naked. And this is, again, a completely different kind of amber. This one is sweet. It's really, really sweet. A little bit resinous, a little bit nutty, but it is a really beautiful, like, sweet amber. It's not a super resinous amber. It doesn't have any of that mustiness to it. It's like a really beautiful, sweet amber. Sweet, kind of slightly nutty amber. Ugh, gorgeous. I love this one. So that is Madonna Truth or Dare Naked. Okay, next we've got a Duat fragrance. This is Duat Amberlicious Cherry, and this one is stunning. This one is a like mixture of um, Ombre Nargule from Hermes and Tom Ford Lost Cherry and it is amazing. It's like an almondy, cherry amber. I love it. It's sweet, super cozy, very warm, very rich, deep, kind of a heavy cherry amber perfume. It's gorgeous. Their version of Ombre Nargile from Hermes is spot on. It is a beautiful, perfect fragrance. So anyways, that is Amberlicious Cherry from Dua. Okay, next we've got another kind of more traditional, kind of slightly musty amber. This is Lode Ombre Extreme from Lardisan. And this one is gorgeous. It's very similar to the Ombre 114 from Histoire de Parfum. But this one is slightly more like resinous and slightly more musty. It's got that beautiful, like, musty bookshop kind of ambery smell to it. I love it. This is like, you can picture in your head a cute little, like, hole-in-the-wall bookshop in, like, a big city in the 1800s, and the bookshop keeper smells like amber. Like, I can see it in my head. That's what it smells like. It's amazing. I love it. So, again, a more traditional smelling, kind of slightly musty, um, vanillic, really beautiful, resinous amber. So, that is Lode Ombre Extreme from Lardisan. Okay, next, this is a really, really affordable amber, but it's gotten difficult to find, which makes me sad. Um, this is Halston Woman Amber. And this one is, this is a really, this might be the darkest amber fragrance I've got in my collection. Oh my gosh, this is a really beautiful, deep, dark, resinous amber, but it's almost got, it's like it's got plum in it or something. I can't totally remember what the notes are in this one, but it smells like it's got some kind of a dark fruit in it as well, like a dark plum. It's beautiful. It's like a dark, sweet, plummy amber. 
it's gorgeous. I am so glad I picked this up when I did. I found it on eBay for $12 and I am so, so happy that I have it because yeah, I've, anytime I talk about this perfume, I, you know, anytime I talk about perfumes, when I upload the videos, I try to find links for perfumes. And I think last time I talked about this one, I was not able to find a link for this, which made me so sad because I don't know it when it when you could find it it was so inexpensive and it was just it was such a great little gem of a perfume but yeah i love it it's like a sweet kind of slightly fruity like plummy amber it's amazing so anyways that is halston woman amber okay next we've got jean paul gautier i think this one is called gautier squared people call it gautier too but i think it's gautier squared i think um, this is really beautiful. This is a really simple amber. I adore this perfume so, so much. I heard that they might be re-releasing re this, which is amazing. This is, it's only three notes. I can't remember thir the third note, but I know it's like amber and vanilla. But this is a beautiful, sweet, there's no mustiness in this at all. It's like a beautiful, sweet, kind of slightly resinous, syrupy amber it's amazing if you can't if you want this perfume perfume and you can't find it ted lapidus makes a perfume called altamir you can find it on last i checked you could find it on um fragrance net and if i can't find i won't be able to find a link for this but i'll link altamir if you want i've got a sample of altamir and i have tested it next to the real thing and they are almost identical. I mean, 99.5% identical. So yeah, if you're somebody who's been wanting Gautier Squared but you can't find it or it's you know really expensive, definitely check out the Ted Lapidus one. It's like $25, I think, really inexpensive. But yeah, I love this one. This is beautiful. This is another one that I think would be perfectly unisex and gorgeous too. So that is Gautier Squared from Jean-Paul Gautier. And then last but not least, I have a Kerner Barcelona Amber. This is Kerner Barcelona Ambar Del Sur. And this is another stunning, ooh, traditional vanillic amber. This one, the only thing that sets this one a little bit apart from my other kind of traditional smelling ambers is this one has a beautiful, fresh, um, really kind of aromatic woody note to it. Ugh, it's gorgeous. A really beautiful, sweet, resinous, vanillic amber. But if you could imagine that this lid is like a fresh, like a fresh cut piece of wood, that's kind of what you get in this fragrance. This one is really beautiful because it's not quite as heavy as some of my other ambers. Um, it's not a light fragrance by any means, but it's definitely not super, super heavy. It's not like a really heavy amber. It's gorgeous. Like the resins are light, the vanilla is light, the woodiness is light. It's kind of a light, beautiful, warm amber. Oh, I adore it. So that is Kerner Barcelona. Ambar Del Sur. And that is gonna be it, guys. Those are 10 perfumes from each of my three favorite perfume notes. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. Let me know if you want me to talk about my least favorite perfume notes. Um, yeah, I've definitely, there are definitely a lot of notes that I steer clear of in perfumery. I most likely won't have perfumes to show you to go along with that. I'll just have to talk about it and then give examples of fragrances that have those notes in them that I just really don't like. But let me know if you're interested in that and I will be happy to make a video about those. So anyways, you guys, I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye.